Hello everyone, I am Karius, and this is Ditto, my new Superstock primary. <laughs> Ditto is a dual strife with linked triggers, semi-automatic, two shots per trigger pull. Internally, this has four Rhino motors and a new switch, and it's one trigger that is linked to both pushers. And of course, your one flywheel switch. But there's both of them. If you only want to fire one, just put one magazine in it. And on the back, we've got two modulus stocks. This is, of course, so I can carry two clips, which makes sense considering it's firing two clips. And it turns out that one easy way to solve the problem of the modulus stock being too wobbly is to just have two of them. This is rock solid now that it's got four supports instead of two. And these are bolted together and then. These are engaged on both stripes up here. And I have a thumb screw on this side because the um, button here is just stuck in between the stripes and it was adding a little bit extra thickness that was keeping the stock from engaging correctly. So I got one, I got just a button here and then a thumb screw over here. So I can remove it fairly easily if I want to, but it's still rock solid because it's attached to both of them. He says as it comes off the other one. Engage, damn it. There we go. Now it's rock solid. And the grip is bolted into the rail on the strife because I end up carrying it by the grip quite a lot and I don't want it to rip off on me. Now when I was merging these, I thinned down the secondary strife quite a bit by just taking it against the belt sander until I was happy with it. And you can tell there's a lot of material missing between if you compare this stripe to this stripe. And in fact, this side of the shell on the secondary stripe is just a skeleton. There's not much left of the plastic on that side. But thankfully, since it's bolted to another stripe and it's got the entire other shell, and even the cage really supports it quite a bit, it's not a big deal, structurally. I chose to have the handle on this side for a couple reasons. The um, for one, it kind of offsets the weight of the battery door. You have that, the battery over here, and then the whole of the stripe over here. And also, since I'm right-handed, my hand goes here, my middle finger can reach both mag releases pretty easily. And I can reach one or the other if I want to. So that works out pretty good. Also, it lets me put the grip on this side, where my left hand's going to be, and You'd think it'd be kind of weird having them diagonal from each other like that, but I love how it feels. And then I got this super wide stock from the two modulus stocks that you brace against your shoulder, and it just, it's nice and comfy. This is going to be my primary and super stock for quite a while. Uh, I linked the jam doors because I couldn't think of a situation where I'd only want to open one, and it just makes it way easier to open both of them if they're linked together like that. And if we load it up... Got 12 darts here. You can see. Let's adjust this so that you can watch the darts. Ta da! And you may notice there is a ton of Jace 3D goodness on this plaster. Got the extended battery tray, two flared magwells, one of which has been altered so that it's comfortable for my hand around that grip. Extended mag releases and these muzzle brakes that he sells. All of which are nice. Really bring the blaster together. Oh, and the thumb screw is Jace 3D as well. Since I'm usually running a loadout that has 18, 18 rad mags on me, I don't really care that I'm using ammo twice as fast. And with the flared magwells and the double stock, it makes it pretty trivial to reload. You just gotta hold the magazines just slightly apart and the flare will do the rest. Blam. Now let's cut to past me showing you the internals. So the internals of strife number one are exactly what you would expect except for the XD60 connector coming out for the second strife. And if you're extremely attentive, you'll notice this hole is a little bigger than it would normally be. And we'll get to that in a moment. 
but otherwise it's a standard strife. Worker flywheels, artifact red cage, full rewire with a new micro switch. Pretty standard stuff. Now the second strife is pretty standard also, except obviously there's not much left of it. The handle's gone, and I've got this little plate here to cover up where it used to be. And the shell has been skeletonized, basically. The um, In order to get it thinner so that they would fit together nicer, I took it to a belt sander until there wasn't much left of it. It's um, really just a plastic outline with the flywheel cage holding it together at the front. And of course the grip, which is screwed into place so that it doesn't come off on me, because I like the feel of it, and I end up carrying it by the grip often enough that felt it was good to just bolt it on. And on the pusher, you can see I've got this pretty long screw threaded through. And now you can kind of see where this is going. Now once we get strife number two bolted on, you can see, kind of, that if I screw this screw in all the way, it will then thread itself into the other pusher, and they'll be linked. So, let's do that real quick. There we go. So, one trigger pull now controls both pushers. And it's extremely smooth. Let's see if you can see the other one. Yep, there we go. You'd think it'd be a little lopsided, but it's not, and you can also help that by leaving the spring off of this strife, so that only the return spring on the other pusher is returning both pushers. And then it's just super smooth. Easy. Oh, and also, the connection between the two strifes is now tucked up under the battery door of strife number two, or what's left of it anyway. There we go, it's fully assembled. As you can see, strife number two has been slimmed down quite a bit so that we get this nice thin profile. Now let's grab the accessories. There we go, much better. All right, so let's do some chronograph testing. Now, there's this weird misconception that I've seen quite a few times in the community that you can't chrono multiple darts at once, which is completely wrong. That's not how a chronograph works. It's just two um, light-sensitive sensors that are looking to see if the light that's coming into this gate and this gate get disturbed by anything, whether that something is a bullet or a big handful of darts going through it, as long as they are in one mass, laterally, the chronograph won't know the difference. So I've, I've chronoed sledge fires, um, the, it handles the discord just fine. I've also chronographed balls of 19 darts flying through it at the same time, and it reads just fine. Unless you're using one of those crappy airsoft chronographs, but the only reason you can't do multiple darts through those is because it's too damn small. So, I'm not even going to do one dart at a time. I'm going to do two darts and show you the readings. Now that was weird. A dart bounced back through the gate strange and it registered it as a 409 that's a pretty crazy strife <laughs> all right and even though those worker serrated flywheels are performing well they're tearing up the darts a lot faster than smooth flywheels So, I'm probably going to swap them out. Actually, leave in the comments below 
what kind of flywheels you would recommend to use with an artifact red cage. And I'll see what options are out there. Of course I wouldn't be happy with just one strife. <laughs> this is my very first strife build, and also my second strife build, as it turns out. I didn't want to make just a boring old strife. I wanted to pull the trigger, shoot two darts at somebody, and have everyone who looks at it go, why? This is also my first time trying to do a little bit more of a paint job than just spray painting the entire piece and calling it good. I actually masked off the strife stripe on both sides. And I hand painted the Nerf logo and I stenciled on the Carrius logo. My brand! Which I think looks great. And then on the other side, I should probably turn this right side up. I have the name. Ditto. And of course another Nerf logo. The idea was to match this color scheme to the modulus stocks, and I think the overall package looks fantastic. I'm really happy with how it came out. And a big thanks to Jace3D for designing all the 3D printed bits I purchased for this blaster, including the muzzle brakes, mag releases, two flared mag wells, battery tray, and thumb screw. He does super high quality stuff, very well designed. I also used one of his Hyperfire 180 covers, which is also fantastic. Highly recommend all of his stuff, and I'll be linking to his store in the description of this video so that you can check it out. I definitely want to try to make videos a little more often. I've got quite a few projects that I'd consider video worthy already. It's just a matter of finding the time to make the videos. But I definitely want to do this more often. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you thought of this video in the comments below. And this has been Carius reminding you to have fun. Hey!